Okay, welcome to our first session of our Lenten study from Max O. Vincent's book, Because of This I Rejoice. If you haven't read the book, it's totally fine. I'm going to spend the next few minutes just talking through some of the highlights that stood out to me. And then on Thursday, we'll get together on a Zoom call so we can all sort of share the things that stood out to us if we're reading the book or practices that we did this week that worked or didn't work. Um, it's just going to be a time for us to connect and talk about the fact that engaging in spiritual disciplines can be tricky and can be hard, but we are determined to find joy in them. And so today we're going to start with joyful prayer. And Vincent talks about how joyful prayer has not always been easy for him. And certainly I can agree it has not always been easy for me either. In fact, it's definitely not something that I have conquered. He talks about feeling at times in his life like prayer was a chore and that he didn't really want to pray. He kind of felt like it was a thing that he had to do. And so maybe that's you. Um, for me, one thing that kind of holds me back from prayer sometimes is that I feel like I have so many things to pray for. It feels completely overwhelming to me. I have so many people and so many circumstances and I have to pray for our country for people, you know, other Christians in other parts of the world. I have to pray for my own family. And there's so, so, so many things that it becomes over, so overwhelming that I sometimes don't pray. And so maybe that's like you. Um, maybe you have kind of, um, maybe you feel guilty about something. So, or you feel shameful about something you've done. And so it's kind of created a wall between you and God. Or maybe um, you feel like prayers that you've prayed in the past have gone unanswered. And so it doesn't really feel good to come before God and bring your greatest concerns before him because he might not answer you. Maybe you're the kind of person that likes to really sort of be in charge and man your own ship and you feel like you're bothering God with your minutia or um, praying a lot is a, another way of saying that you're not really in control of what's going on in your life. So, um, any of those things or all of those things or none of those things, I think we all have different, um, challenges that we face with prayer. And so the idea here is that we're going to try to find joy in prayer. And so the first thing that I want to bring our attention to with that is that, um, sometimes I think a hard part about being a Christian is that we can become very numb to the unbelievable reality before us. And I think that's just true of people, right? Um, like you don't wake up in the morning and this unbelievable excitement because you turn on the tap and fresh clean water comes out. Although we really should be that excited, right? I mean, that's an amazing thing. Instead, I think after a few days of fresh clean water coming out of the tap, you're much more likely to be, um, to bemoan the fact that you forgot to set the, uh, automatic programmable coffee machine to go off the night before. I think that's just how we are as humans. And so maybe the most important first step that we have to take here is to recognize what prayer actually is, which is a conversation between you and the God of the universe the creator of all things. It's kind of mind blowing. So if you just step back for a minute and let that sink in, it's prayer is you having a conversation with the creator of all things. That's amazing. And that should bring us overflowing joy, but don't beat yourself up too much. If you feel filled with overflowing joy for a few days and then you're cranky about something because I think that's kind of how we are as humans. So part of practicing spiritual disciplines is giving ourselves grace to know that we're going to have these sort of ups and downs, but also that we try and try again because we know that there is real purpose in what we're doing, that we engage in these disciplines so that we can be more connected to Jesus. So um, I think let's do this. Let me read to you from Paul. This whole study that we're doing is based on the book of Philippians. And, um, 
this is Paul is has been imprisoned and this is the letter he's writing to the church at Philippi. So I'm just starting at Philippians chapter one. This letter is from Paul and Timothy, slaves of Christ Jesus. I'm writing to all of God's holy people in Philippi who belong to Christ Jesus, including the elders and the deacons. May God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Whenever I pray, I make my requests for all of you with great joy. For you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now. And I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. So it is right that I should feel as I do about all of you for you have a special place in my heart. You share with me the special favor of God, both in my imprisonment and in defending and confirming the truth of the good news. God knows how much I love you and long for you with the tender compassion of Christ Jesus. I pray that your love will overflow more and more and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and in understanding. For I want you to understand what really matters so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation, the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ, for this will bring much glory and praise to God. I hope I did that justice. Paul is speaking here with such joy in spite of the fact that he is imprisoned. So I think whatever our own issues might be about prayer, it's important here that we look to Paul, who is imprisoned and yet writing with such incredible joy and talking about his own prayer life, how it is so full of joy. I mean, I hope you could hear it in the way that I read um, that Paul is just overflowing with this like joy and excitement about these fellow Christians. So he also gives us here a wonderful model for prayer. And that is this thanksgiving. He's talking about how thankful he is that in his prayers, he's always thanking God for this church. Then intercession. He talks about how he's praying for this church. He's praying for these people, for what they're doing, for how they're growing. And then he gives praise to God again. And that's a helpful model for us. Um, Vincent in his book describes um, his own experience as a pastor in a church of choosing this model as a way to um, give his prayers uh, form and um, not routine in a bad sense, but um, like a real routine that he could uh, copy from, from one day to the next. And in this pattern that Paul gives him of thanksgiving and intercession and praise. So he talks about what he does is he takes the church directory and he just starts at the top and prays for five people each morning. And at first, of course, it feels like a very awkward thing to be doing. He doesn't know all these people that are on that are in the church directory. He doesn't really always know them well enough to pray for specific things about them. Some of them are people he doesn't particularly get along with. But he makes this decision that he is going to engage in this practice, that he is going to find something in these per people's lives that he can give thanks for, that he is going to pray specifically for them, and that he is going to praise God for the work that is being done. And so he talks about after doing this for a couple weeks, how he is so overflowing with joy about what he's doing because he sees so much of God in action and that he starts like waking up early, like so eager to get onto his prayer practice for the day. And so I think that that's a really great lesson for us. Um, as we, as we try to look this week for ways that we can begin a joyful spiritual discipline of prayer. And that is, um, I think first for us to really look for places to be in Thanksgiving. And so what that really looks like for us is places where God is working. So I think it is valuable and good to thank God 
for your family, to thank God for the roof over your head and all of that. But so powerful is to thank God for specific things that you see happening, for the ways in which God is working around you. And I think that this is very much um, like when, when you become aware of something for the first time, how you see it everywhere, like um, when you first learn the meaning of a word that you didn't know before, suddenly you, you hear that word all over the place. Of course, it's not that people are suddenly using that word more. It's that you're noticing it. You're sensitive to it. And that's the same thing here. If you really start seeking, searching for places, for situations, for circumstances where you can see God at work, that will just build on itself. You will see more and more and more. You'll find them everywhere. And I think that practice in itself of that Thanksgiving, of seeking specific things, places where God is at work, will be a great joy to you and a good way to start our prayer. You will see um, signs of God at work all over. Another thing here in following with Paul's model is intercession for others. And it is very powerful to um, hold a holy space for someone else, to pray, to intercede on someone else's behalf. But I also want to encourage you when you're doing that, like Vincent describes doing, um, as he tries to seek specific things to pray for, for these people in his church directory. When you intercede for others, when you pray for them, find specific things to pray for. The reason that I kind of emphasize that idea of something specific is because um, if you pray an overarching prayer like, God, please let me have a good day at work tomorrow. It doesn't, it doesn't leave, it doesn't, um, it doesn't make it so that when God shows up, you really know it. Cause you can think like, oh, well, I just had a good day. If I had prayed that prayer or not, my day would have been the same. But if you pray a specific prayer, like God, this morning I have a meeting, please sit with me. Give me calm as I prepare, prepare to present to my boss. Help me think clearly. Give me, a, um, give me the words to say so that I don't get tongue-tied, so that I can present my ideas in a clear way that are easily understood. Help my boss have a special fondness for me today so that she is eager to hear what I'm saying. If you pray a prayer like that, with that level of specificity, there's no doubt in your mind when God shows up, right? So that is also part of intercession, is you're praying for something specific so that when God answers your prayer and shows up and does the thing, you can really be thankful for it because you see it happening. You know there ain't no way that that was chance. So, um, I think when you pray those kind of prayers, God will knock you over with his answer. So um, this is what we're going to do for this Thursday, your application for the week. Okay. So from now until Thursday, when we meet, try to do some of these things. Don't try to do all of these things. That's not the idea. The, the point here is that we are all totally different. Just like we have different obstacles that might keep us from prayer. We all have different ways that we will overcome those obstacles. So don't try to do all these things. If you try something and it doesn't work, that's fine. That is just not the thing for you, but keep seeking. Okay. I do think though that, that following that kind of idea of Thanksgiving and intercession and praise is a really wonderful kind of pattern. If you're not really sure where to start and praying specific things is helpful. So, um, for you personally and for your family, if you have children, one excellent thing for you to do this week is just to bring up this idea of specific things to be thankful to God for. So around the dinner table each night this week, ask people what they are specifically thankful for that God has done for them. Um, you might take a night where you do something specific that you're praising God for a specific thing that you can really, everyone can kind of really wrap their minds around this like one actual thing, not just we thank God for loving us. Yes, but how, what does that look like? The more specific you get, the more meaningful it's gonna be for you. 
but that's a great way for your family to kind of get in on this. Um, if you think of something specific like that, you come up with some real concrete things you're thankful for, you're praising God for, scribble them down and paste them on the fridge or on the bathroom mirror or something. It's a good way to just remind yourself to, to pray for those things every day. Um, you may also just try this week to pray only prayers of thanksgiving. That's another way to kind of change your prayer routine. Um, it, just only pray prayers of thanksgiving or only pray prayers of praise. Don't do anything else. See where that puts you in your connection to Jesus, how that brings you joy. Uh, another great thing to do with children is a prayer walk. It's also great to do on your own, but um, a prayer walk is when you just walk through your neighborhood or through a park or whatever and you just pray as the spirit prompts you. So as you pass a house, if you feel like there is sadness there, you pray for the people in that house that they might be comforted. You can do this for a block. You can do it for 10 miles. You can just pray for the people passing by you, not because they look sad, but just pray for them. Pray that they would feel God's love. That's a very powerful way to connect with the Holy Spirit, letting the Holy Spirit intercede on your behalf in your prayers because the Holy Spirit knows what that person needs prayer for. One thing I love that has been so helpful to me is prayer beads. Um, this is not a rosary. It's a, uh, it, this is like a Protestant prayer beads. Actually, um, a, a Methodist uh, women's group started making these. And so you can buy them online or make your own. The reason I love these prayer beads is because, um, there are seven beads between each like larger bead. And so for me, it's very useful the, as I pray, because as I said before, I tend to get kind of overwhelmed in my prayers. I, I have so much to pray for. I just, it feels overwhelming. So, um, the pattern of it is you pray, you pray seven things of praise to God, seven specific things that you are praising God for seven specific things that you're thankful for. So these are more like, um, you praise God for his, um, capacity to forgive or something. Um, here you praise God for specific things like, um, you know, the way that you were able to do so well in your meeting that you prayed about something like that specific, seven specific things of Thanksgiving, seven specific elements of confession. This is really great. Because um, if I'm being honest, sometimes I feel like I go a ho whole day and I'm not sinning at all. But of course I am, right? I'm not like killing anyone or anything like that. But um, I have judgmental thoughts. I can um, ask forgiveness for my selfishness, et cetera, right? We can all easily find seven things. If you're prompted to with seven beads, you can find seven things, I tell you. And then the last seven are seven... Um, seven petitions. So your prayers of intercession for others, or prayers for things for yourself. This to me feels doable because I only, it's all, I'm only allowed seven things. So, um, if that's something that would work for you, fantastic, do it there. It's, I found it to be very helpful. Another thing you can do is use like a book of common prayer. Um, maybe sometimes reading other people's prayers, reading through Psalms can be things that really inspire you. If you just read them and read them with a prayerful heart. They are prayers. So I hope that that's been helpful for you as we're kind of investigating how this is going to work. Uh, again, we're going to meet on Thursday at eight o'clock via Zoom. Um, the link will be on the church website and we're just going to show up and talk about how it went. Practices that you did this week, things that worked, things you tried that were a complete failure and, um, and it's fine. We're all going to find joy in our disciplines together. So best wishes to you this week as you go forth seeking joy in prayer. I will be praying for all of you this week and um, my and blessings unto you.